Sonic and Mario, two iconic video game characters that waged war against each other with the console wars in the 80s and 90s, until Nintendo won and Sega started selling Sonic to literally every video game system they could. So, how do their recent family movies compare to each other in a day and age where video game movies and shows are actually starting to get consistently good? We are about to find out. Let the battle commence. We all know the story for Mario. There it is. Yeah. It's less of a story and more of an objective, and it's a formula that's proven to work. The story for pretty much every Mario game is just an excuse so the gameplay can happen, and the story is very much the same for this movie. It has a little more depth to it, but not much. And this time, instead of Peach getting kidnapped, it's Luigi. And the simplistic story for Super Mario Bros. is both its strength and its weakness, but we'll talk more about that later. And the story for Sonic is also very simple, and is definitely more akin to the stories of early 2000s kids movies with the mix of the game's plot. The story is that one day when he's feeling unbearably lonely, Sonic runs as fast as he can, causing a shockwave called Flashpoint, which brings both his and Mario's world together, where Bowser and Dr. Robotnik have teamed up and taken over. And Sonic, Mario, Tails, and Knuckles all come together to take down the two evil masterminds, Jim Carrey and Jack Black. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my dream Sonic and Mario crossover movie that Hollywood will never make. <sighs> a man can dream. The actual story for Sonic the Hedgehog is that one day when he's feeling unbearably lonely, Sonic runs as fast as he can, causing a shockwave which causes all the power in the city to shut down. In response to this, the government send over Bruce Almighty to investigate. Sonic tries to escape and hide in his mushroom world, but thanks to his new friend Donut Lord, he loses his transportation rings and needs to go and find them. So both he and Donut Lord embark on a road trip journey to help Sonic go home. Now the story for Sonic is serviceable, but the story is not what makes this movie fun. It's the characters and the action. The story is really just a means to an end, but for this kind of movie, that is fine, and the movie gives enough time to develop its characters to a point that it was actually more than just fine. The only real problem I have with the story for Sonic is that the shortcuts it takes are not to benefit the story, but are done so they can spend less money. The studio clearly did not want to fund a movie that takes place in the video games world, and decided to bring Sonic to Earth. Not because it makes sense, but because it's cheaper. For the majority of the movie, the only effect is Sonic, and the rest is so cheap to shoot with basic sets. And that is a shame to me, as the bit of the mushroom world that we do see at the beginning of the movie looks so cool, and I would really have liked to see it explored more. This is the same sentiment I had towards seeing Cybertron in the opening of Bumblebee. But no, we get to Earth and do a road trip movie instead. Hooray. Now, as I alluded earlier, there are weaknesses with the story for Super Mario Bros., and a big one is the overall pacing. As soon as Luigi gets separated from Mario, Toad instantly tells him a few seconds later, your brother was captured by Bowser and held prisoner in the Darklands. That reveal and moment of realization was so quick, and there was no build-up to it, and Mario wasn't even given any time to react to that terrible information. The movie feels like it's on fast-forward sometimes. It's good to get the movie going, but this got going way too fast. The first two acts of the film felt less paced like a movie and more like, well, a video game, with just a tiny cutscene to transition you to the next level. And I didn't mind that at times, but it did make the movie feel rushed in places where you wanted to take a breather, take in the world, and see the characters react to this terrible news. Sonic, on the other hand, never had this pacing issue. As basic as the story is, it felt like everything was given the appropriate amount of time before they moved on to the next scene, whereas I can't say the same with the first half of Super Mario Bros. Now, on the one hand, the story works for the franchise that it's adapting, as the pacing is accurate to that of a Mario video game. But on the other hand, this is a movie, and the best course of action for something like this is to blend the two styles together, kind of like what Mario did with his action scenes. But unfortunately, Mario did not bring that level of balance to its story, and when compared to Sonic's slightly better paced story, Mario's story falls very short in comparison. On the plus side, I would argue that Mario has slightly better pacing in the sense that I was never bored, whereas Sonic did have some boring moments. So that gives points to Mario's story, but the fast forwarding nature brings the quality of its pacing back down, and I would rather have a movie go a bit over time with a scene, rather than under time. So the movie with the superior story is Sonic the Hedgehog. Now before we get started, this round is not a comparison between Sonic and Mario as a franchise. This is purely a comparison of their characters in the movies. So fear not Sonic and Mario fans, whichever I choose doesn't mean I prefer one over the other. 
even if I prefer Mario. Now, both characters at their core are going through different emotional arcs. Sonic goes through loneliness, and Mario feels like a failure. It was also very amusing to see Mario have to learn all his different styles of gameplay, and it was really amusing to see him fall through all the pitfalls that we do when playing his games. And we definitely saw Mario go from zero to hero. He had an arc with how he acquired his skill set and didn't just master everything on his very first try. <coughs> And I really liked that about him. It sends the message that practice makes perfect, and it made his victories later feel much more rewarding and earned, and it made you root for him to succeed. I even liked his personality. He had his over-the-top moments, but he was quite reserved throughout the majority of the film, and wasn't shouting all his dialogue, which could have been a very easy trap for him to fall into. Now, Sonic is definitely a more immature character than Mario, but you soon realize that it's a cover for the fact that he is incredibly lonely. So much so that he plays the role of his friends, and even pretends that he's family with an affectionate couple that he enjoys watching, and he tries to put a smile on his face when really, he is as sad and lonely as can be. He just hasn't admitted it to himself yet. He's in blissful denial. He's also been on Earth for 10 years since he was a kid right after losing someone. His Owl Sensei Guardian... thing. And the voice acting for both characters is good too. Neither of them are my first choice, but they ended up playing the parts very well. And I was especially surprised with Chris Pratt as Mario, because you couldn't even tell that it was Chris Pratt. In fact, if you didn't tell me that Chris Pratt was doing the voice, I never would have guessed it was him. So whichever character you prefer all depends on personal preference. And these characters don't have just one personality, they have several with their various different interpretations, including TV shows. But for me personally, I really gravitated towards the loneliness storyline with Sonic. Now, the useless storyline with Mario was also good, but the way the movie showcases Sonic and his loneliness, his denial, and his eventual acceptance into a family, it really works incredibly well, and it felt more satisfying as a character arc. Now, that being said, I do prefer Mario's personality as he's less annoying than Sonic, because as much slack as I cut Sonic for his overcompensating positive attitude, he still got annoying at times. Mario, on the other hand, was much more charming to spend time with, and that is in large part down to Chris Pratt and his performance, even though his character arc was very basic. But neither of these two's character arcs are deep. They are definitely hovering over surface level. And although I think the movies both do an incredible job at adapting their iconic video game characters, the movie with the superior title character for me is Sonic the Hedgehog. The rest of the characters in Super Mario include Luigi, Princess Peach, Donkey Kong, Toad, and a smattering of others, including the vengeful dog who was absolutely hilarious. Now of them, Peach has definitely been modernized and is no longer a damsel in distress, and I thought they handled it well. Except for the one scene where she says that she got the hang of advanced and flawless platforming on her first try. How many tries did it take you? Oh, so many. I was not good at it. Worse than you. You got it right away, didn't you? I got it right away. In the theater, I was like, come on, don't do this. This is giving me serious Ray vibes. How many tries did it take you? Oh, so many. I was not good at it. You got it right away, didn't you? I got it right away. And on top of that, it's supposed to be a feminist line, but whether they realized it or not, it ended up feeling low-key like an insult to those of us that played the games. Almost like the movie's inadvertently saying, what, you mean you couldn't win this level on your first try? Even Princess Peach could beat it on her first go, you hack. You stink! And I was surprised at how Donkey Kong was such an asshole. Anytime him and Mario looked to be finding some common ground with their vulnerabilities, Mario would be sympathetic, whereas Donkey Kong would always throw it back in his face. And what my dad thinks I'm a joke too. Yeah, well... Your dad's right! You know what? And it was funny every time. And the brotherly bond between Mario and Luigi was one of the highlights of the movie to me, which kind of made it a shame when the two got separated. So much so, I actually would have preferred if Peach was the one who got captured. And then we get the characters in Sonic. Now let me tell you, I like the characters in the first Sonic movie. D-I-V-O-R-C-E most of them. But let's be honest, the human characters are just made up for the movie because they're cheaper than creating Knuckles and Tails. And honestly, I don't even need to do a deep dive analysis as to which characters are better. Sonic has your pretty typical made-to-order human characters that give Sonic someone to talk to, and to be fair, they are better than your average human characters, but at the same time, they do feel very generic as far as bundling human characters with CGI characters go. I mean, even James Marsden has already been on one of these before, and although the sequel mostly fixes this, 
In the first movie, the characters are there, but aside from Dr. Robotnik, they are incredibly disposable. The characters in Super Mario are from the actual games and they really help make the movie. And they are far more enjoyable to watch than the characters in the Sonic movie. And are less stale, less generic. No, 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 not today. No, and less annoying. So the movie with the superior characters is Super Mario Brothers. I could go on a full tangent, but let's not kid ourselves here. Bowser is a good villain and very cartoony, but he doesn't come close to the live action cartoon that is Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey makes this movie, and if it wasn't for him, the Sonic film would not be the same. Oh, you must know my buddy Spencer. We play softball together. <laughs> Spence. He's a good man. Don't hurt him! <laughs> what do I look like, an imbecile? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! And as much fun as I had with Bowser and Jack Black's unrecognizable voice, he doesn't have nearly the same impact as Dr. Robotnik does. He definitely means business, and his constant insecurities about Mario scoring with Princess Peach provided some non-stop laughs, and even though you can't recognize Jack Black's voice, some of his behaviors and sly mannerisms come through, and it's so funny. At one point, he says to his henchman, Sit. Jam with me. And I'm like, that's totally Jack Black right there. And if you imagine that it's Jack Black saying these lines, it's so much funnier. But even the hilarity of Jack Black cannot compete with Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is on another level when compared to, well, just humans, and is somehow able to out-cartoon all of these cartoons, especially in the second movie, but that's a video for another day. I really enjoy both of these villains. They aren't deep or thought-provoking, but they are exactly who you would want our heroes to go up against, and they have hired the perfect actors for the roles. But in the end, the movie that has the superior villain is Sonic the Hedgehog. Due to the nature of the two franchises, one movie is more action-based and the other is more platform-based. The only time we get more traditional action in Super Mario is with the racing scene. In particular, Mario utilizes action set pieces from several of its games rather than just the one. And I like how the action in Mario is full of references that non-Mario players won't get, such as when Mario drifts on the track and then his cart speeds up. And the animation throughout all of these action sequences is so beautiful and full of passion and energy. And I gotta say, this has to be the most video game movie of all video game movies. Anytime we reach an action set piece or Mario and Luigi have to platform, the camera shifts its perspective to a 2.5D video game angle. These are the same angles that happen in the game, and it makes the video game movie still feel like a movie, but play out like a video game. When you watch the action scenes in Sonic, they are very much movie action scenes. Very rarely, if ever, does the Sonic movie shift its camera angle to the video game's angle. And that doesn't mean that it has to, because when past video game movies attempt to do that, it just takes you out of the whole experience. Kinda like the 2005 Doom movie. But Super Mario Bros. did not. It somehow managed to make the platforming all the more engaging and tug at the nostalgic heartstrings for every generation of Mario players. Whether you played on the NES, or SNES, the N64, the DS like I did, or even the Wii and Switch versions, there was something in here for every generation of Mario gamer. And it is astonishingly good how the movie managed to do that. And it even incorporated a huge variety of Mario games into this one movie, the most prominent ones being Super Mario 64, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario 3D Land, and Mario Kart, which are some of the most iconic of the franchise. The only disappointments I have with the action is that the Mario Kart race was good, but could have been better and even more creative, and the music for the action scenes could have incorporated more epic Mario music, which this movie squanders so many opportunities it's not even funny. Interestingly, the action in both of these movies do resemble each other at times. The final action scene in both films takes place on Earth, on a road, backup arrives for both characters, and both movies even get a credit scene where it's teased that in the next movie, our title character is going to get a pet. Mario is just so unique in its execution that it really combines video game and movie action in a way that we have never seen before. So much so that it actually makes you feel like playing the game after you finish watching, which is also how episode 2 of HBO's The Last of Us made you feel. Whereas the action with Sonic is great, 
It never made me feel like playing the game, because aside from a couple of recognisable moves and ripping off X-Men Days of Future Past, most of it is original action, designed and choreographed specifically for the movie. In Mario, however, everything you see in the action can be done in the game, and not only can it be done, but it's very likely that you have already done it. And to see it done in the movie feels like your memorable gaming sessions actually made it into the film, and it provides an extra layer of enjoyment and nostalgia to the action scenes. So the action in both films is great, and it really depends on what kind of action you're looking for. But for me, as platformy as the action scenes in Super Mario are, the fact is that it somehow managed to take the gameplay from the game and perfectly translate it to the movie whilst being able to make it look natural and not mechanical. And that is such a huge technological leap for video game movies and it really blew me away with this blend of the two styles. So to me, the movie with the superior action is Super Mario Bros. In the end, both of these movies have different approaches and each paid off and honoured the material in different ways. Mario was more direct and Sonic less so, but still ended up being fun as it got the character down, and that goes triply for the sequel. And that just reminds me of the high that video game adaptations seem to be going on lately. I mean seriously, the difference in quality between video game projects now and back then are symbolised perfectly with the new and improved Sonic we ended up getting and the live action Dung Beetle we got the first time. And as I said, it really makes you want to play the game. In fact, I loved the way they used the gliding wheels in the movie so much that I actually installed and set up the Wii U emulator on my Steam Deck just so I could play Mario Kart 8 with the gliding wheels, and eventually play on the revised Rainbow Track. It sucked in the end, with me far preferring the old Rainbow Tracks in the DS and 3DS versions, which looked more like the one in the movie, but still, the fact that it motivated me to embark on a journey of disappointment I wouldn't have otherwise, that shouldn't go unnoticed. Funny thing is, I also wanted to play The Last of Us again after watching them fend off the clickers in episode too. That's when these video game movies go the extra mile to me. Not only do they work as great entertainment, but they simultaneously make you want to play the game. And I never got that from the Sonic movies. They worked great as movies, but they didn't make me think about playing the game even once. I mean, how else do you expect me to throw money away, Sega? And that is an ingredient to video game movies that I didn't even think I needed. But then these two rascals came along, and now I do. It's time for the scores. Sonic the Hedgehog is a good movie, but it does get weighed down by its pretty bare bones and lazy road trip story. The second movie massively remedies this, but the first movie does feel very dated, and the more you rewatch it, the road trip element really starts to wear on you after a while. And because of that, Sonic the Hedgehog gets a high 6 out of 10. And Super Mario Bros. is quite basic and feels like it needs more emotional substance, but it does a lot of things very well. And I came away having a lot of fun with the movie. Aside from Jim Carrey, I thought the comedy was better in the Mario movie, and all around, I had a really good time watching it. And as flawed as the pacing is, I still had a lot of fun, and I actually wanted to watch it again. So Super Mario Bros. gets a very good 7 out of 10. If you've played the games, you can't go wrong with either of these movies. If anything, you'll really appreciate the implementation of the game's lore, small attention to details, and references that they integrated. Sonic just needs to spend less time with the humans and more time with the video game characters and video game worlds. And Sonic the Hedgehog 2 strikes that balance a lot better than Sonic 1 did. And Mario... <laughs> It took you to Mushroom Kingdom and it kept you there for 90% of the movie. And I hope future video game movies of this sort do the exact same thing, including Sonic 3. And I'll also throw Transformers on that list too. At the end of the day, whether Mario or Sonic is better is a matter of personal opinion, but both characters have left an indelible mark on video game history. And now they have also left their mark on movie history, and I am very eager to see where we go from here. Will Hollywood give extra time and effort to all of these upcoming video game adaptations? Or will they get lazy and drop the ball? We will have to wait and see. But one thing is for sure, the path forward is a lot more promising than what we had before. Let me know what you guys think of the two movies below, and which one you think is superior. Also, let me know what your top 5 favourite Mario and Sonic games are in the comments as well. My favourite Sonic game is Sonic Rush on the DS. I know it's not a great version, but that was my entry into the Sonic games and I loved it as a kid. And my favourite Mario game of all time is Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. The 3D effect was very good, and the kite gliding really transformed the gameplay for me. And it also had really fun multiplayer, just like the DS version, and the DS and 3DS just 
just felt like the perfect form factor to play Mario Kart on. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons. And if you head on over to my Patreon right now, you will see me react to the final The Flash trailer, and you will also very soon see me react to the new trailer and gameplay footage of Spider-Man 2 for PS5. Thanks again as always for watching guys, and I will see all of you next time. Take care.